Hi, uh, once again, I'm going to be covering view-based NS table views that are bound to NS array controllers. So the current version of Xcode is 9.2. And so we're going to start at the very beginning of making an Xcode project. So I'm going to go ahead and start create a new Xcode project. Now, remember, this isn't on the iPhone, which uses UI table views. This is on the Mac, so we're making a Mac app here. So I'm going to choose Mac OS and I'm going to choose Coco app. Hit next. Uh, the next thing I'm going to call this is just um, uh, just uh, table views Coco. And I'm going to use storyboards here. I'm not going to create a document based application and I'm going to use core data, no unit tests or UI tests. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible. So I'm just going to drop this on the desktop and hit create. So the first thing I'm going to do is just paste in some boiler, boilerplate code. Um, and this is just to make things a little easier for me. I, I like to, for the app to stop whenever I quit the window. So I'm going to do that right now. If I don't do that, the application keeps running. And then I have to close it separately, which is just kind of a pain. So first thing I'm going to do is paste in some boilerplate code. So this is the function that I'm going to um, add. And I pretty much for any uh, document based project, you know, this is uh, a bit of code, which which is really handy. The uh, where we were just going to leave the view controller back in class and um, we're not going to make any great changes to the storyboard. We're going to um, I'm going to launch this just to make sure it works. And if it works, we'll proceed to the next step. So we're going to take we're going to go over down here. So we're going to we're going to take the uh, object library and I'm going to type in table view and it's going to give me this first table view and I'm just going to, I'm going to drag that oops I'm going to drag it into the view controller and I'm just going to make it as big as it can go the next thing I'm going to do is add a array controller so I type in array it gives me this nice array controller the next thing I could do is if I go over here and select the view controller, I can bind that to the sides by resolving these layout issues. Um, if I click on reset to suggested constraints, it will automatically add some nice constraints for me. So when I run the project next, I can resize the window and the table view will resize. So the next thing I want to do is add a class. So the purpose of an array controller is of course to hold an array which are going to be a bunch of uh, objects. And so I want to create a class um, for this array. So what I'm going to do is go ahead, I'm going to click here on this main folder of my project, right click, new file, and I'm going to choose Swift file here. So, um, and I'm doing this for a specific reason. So, because this is kind of the first place you'd go. And I'm going to call this class person because we're going to make the quintessential person class. So with this selected, we've got um, the person.swift. Let's go ahead and create the, a very simple class. We're going to type in class person, do our curly braces, and we're going to give it a nice uh, property of which is name. We're going to make it a string. And now we're going to have an init method. So the init method is going to be, so notice we get an error message here because the, the, the class wants, wants to have that um, var assigned since it's not an optional. So we're going to go init and I'm going to go name and then string, create the curly braces. And now we're just going to go self.name equals name and it'll be able to figure out which name we're talking about and this and if I hit build it'll build just fine so it looks good right okay so the next thing we're gonna do is go back to the main storyboard and I'm gonna click on the view controller here and when I see you really could click almost anything in here to have it appear over here in this uh, uh, object I'm not sure what this is called the object doc so I'm going to click on array controller. Then I'm going to go over here to the attributes inspector and, and click this. And where it says mode class, 
Um, I've got two options. I've got a class and I've got an entity name. I want it to be a class. Entity is for core data. I, I just want to use a uh, the NS array control without core data. And I'm going to type in person and hit enter. And we've added class and person. The next thing I want to do is create an outlet to the backing class. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this uh, the app delegate. Hold down Command, Option, Shift, and I can click on this. It'll give me this one little window. I can click on the plus here. Then I can double click, and it gives me this window. So what I want to do is go ahead and open up the view controller. Now, I want to create an IB outlet, so I can go, I can drag from here or here but I'm going to hold down control and drag over. This will give me an IB outlet and I'm going to call this person AC. So person array controller. I could also spell out array controller. That's totally fine too. So this gives me a way to add and delete objects into my array controller from my backing class. And let's go ahead and add an object. In view did load, I can go ahead and create a new object so that um, person equals person and I'm just going to type in Bob and now for my array controller I'm going to go persons AC dot add object and type in person so this will add one person to our array controller so we can see some data showing up the next step is to bind the table view to this array controller so I'm going to click anywhere on the table view and we're going to start to have to have to drill down into this control because it starts with this border to control view we have a clip view then we have the table view so let's click on table view and the first thing we want to do is go over here and we, we see it's view based we have an option of seller view based in this case we're going view based because they both have different bindings we can also select how many columns we want so if you have you know a dozen columns you can add them here um, I'm actually going to decrease this to just one column because that's all we're going to be using the next thing we're going to do is go over to the bindings inspector and I'm going to find the con table view, view content I'm going to open up content here you'll notice that person AC nicely uh, appears there so we're going because it's finding that outlet in the view controller the controller key is going to be arranged objects and we're just going to leave model key path blank and there's going to be this red exclamation part but that actually doesn't do anything to us uh, we can just leave that alone so the next thing we're going to do is start drilling down again so here we have a table column so we'd have um, a bunch of these if we had multiple tables so we're just going to go table column and I'm just going to name this right now and you can actually name this by double clicking in here and I'm going to type in name the next thing I'm going to do is open table cell view and then here's table view cell. And we don't actually want to bind to this last thing because this is the, I believe this is the text field that is the backing, um, it's the UI element of this table view cell. So the next thing we do is go over to value and expand this. The, it's not intuitive all, but where it says table cell view, we, we leave it here. We do not bind it to anything else. We go bind to, here we have object value and we add in dot whatever we want to bind to it. So here we have, we have dot name. Let's go ahead and run and see what happens here. So I'm gonna hit the run button and, and you can see it crashes. So this isn't good. Um, we've got uh, this SIG abort, it crashes right into the out delegate and it gives us some messages here. So here we have an, an error that says unrecognize the selector, add observer for keypad context, and what this is telling us is that our Swift person needs to be derived from NS object. So because this is bindings, and I guess it's it's kind of old, and it, it's expecting an NS object for all the um, the magic to happen. So let's uh, so we just added that, and we're going to run it again. We're going to see what happens. And we get another SIG abort here, which, you know, is, is disheartening because, you know, I thought I had it, right? But of, of course not. So let's go ahead and look at the error message. And in this case, the error message, 
go ahead goes and says value for key undefined this class is not key value coding compliant for the key name now um, in Xcode 8 um, we use Swift 3 and then in Xcode 9 it is changed to Swift 4 and there was um, a migration process and the documentation for migrating from Swift 3 to 4 was actually really good and um, and I and I and I actually read it, which is which is great, because it contained the the clue for this. So if you're if you're having problems, and it, let's face it, it's just so depressing when you get something any crash in the app de, app delegate kind of depresses me because you really don't know where it happened, you don't know the exact line where it failed, and this is this is like the binding hell is when you're you get these crashes like this and you don't you don't really know. So this is a you know a pretty good clue. We're going to go to our person class, and we are actually going to have to add an Objective C um, keyword here. And what this does is it allows that Swift type to be accessible to thing Objective C. So in Xcode 8, this was automatically inserted for you. You just never knew it was there and now you have to add it yourself and theoretically you're supposed to be able to type in this um, but it it doesn't actually seem to work for me but I adding this let's see let's go ahead and run this and we'll see what happens and look we get it showing up so this is great and I can now close the window and get this to show up if you want to see more binding videos just leave a comment in the comment section and I hope you got a lot out of a lot out of this. Thanks very much. Um, have a great day uh, coding with NS Table View.